Good morning, boys and girls. Um, this is Miss McIntyre. We are on our whew, fourth week of digital learning. Is that correct? It is April 6th. Um, we are going to be making some predictions today. So before we move on to chapter or part four, excuse me, of Frankenstein, we're going to be making some predictions. So what you're going to find in your Google Classroom is this document called What's Going to Happen Next, okay? Um, it'll look like this in your Google Classroom. What will happen next? Making predictions in Frankenstein. And that's the document we're going to look at today. So let's read the directions. One of the most important skills to have as a reader is the ability to make predictions. When you make predictions, you use parts of the text that you've already read to make solid guesses about what will happen next. It's important to use text evidence to make guesses. This helps verify or support your predictions and helps build your inferencing skills. It doesn't have to be a direct quote or a specific line from the book, but most books are consistent. This means what happens next is usually not too surprising or out of left field. So you can support predictions with your overall understanding of the world of the book. And you're watching my lesson here to help you with this skill. So what I mean by this is that books are kind of like a universe, okay? And authors work very hard to make that universe consistent. That's what makes a book good. If really at the end of the day, everything makes sense. Even if there is a big twist or a surprise, the world of the book should make sense. So basically authors are forming this big picture. And as they write events, the events can be surprising. They can be normal, surprise, normal, a big twist, right? But it's important that none of the events go way outside of the world of the book. If they do, then the book won't make any sense, okay? So what's important is that everything makes sense within the world that the author has created, okay? So this is Victor's world. Anything that happens in Frankenstein even if it's shocking, even if it's a twist, it has to fit and make sense within Victor's world. So as we're making predictions, we are guessing what's the most likely thing to happen in Victor's world. Now, before we start, let's make a couple of assumptions about Victor's world. Is Victor's world dark or happy? Victor's world is gothic. Remember our gothic literary element? elements and that is dark and gloomy remember most things in victor's life so far have led down this kind of dark path right and a lot of this is due to his obsessions okay we also know that his family is going to be a key factor in this story. What happens to Elizabeth? What happens to his father, his brothers, his best friend, Henry? These are things that are all going to continue to come back into play. So if we're making a prediction and we have to think, like, what's the rest of the story going to revolve around? We know it's going to revolve around Victor's family and his obsessions, okay? We also kind of know by now that Victor doesn't always do the right thing. So I'm going to put misbehaves here, even though that's like kind of a really broad term to catch a lot of stuff. Victor doesn't always do exactly what he's supposed to do, right? He doesn't always go to his classes. He doesn't always own up for things. He doesn't take responsibility. So he misbehaves. So any predictions that we make are going to have to fit within what we already know about Victor. So we're not just going to assume that he's going to do everything right. We're not going to assume that he's going to forget all about his family. We're not going to assume that anything super cheerful or happy is going to happen to him. And we're not going to assume that he's just going to let all of these things go completely. Okay. We're going to assume that anything that happens next will fit within what we already know about Victor. 
So what we're going to do with this information that we've brainstormed is we're going to examine some quotes from Frankenstein and make guided predictions. So what I've done on this chart, let me erase this so let me move on, is I have the first two quotes are things that we've seen in the past. So they're from chapter six and seven. So we already know the answer. We're not making a prediction, but you can kind of see the skill. And then quotes three, four, and five will give you an ability to make a prediction. So I'm going to do one and three on this video, okay? So I'm going to do one that we already know, and then I'm going to do one that we don't know, okay? So let's start with quote one. It says, get well and return to us. You will find a happy, cheerful home and friends who love you dearly. Your father's health is vigorous, and he asks but to see you, but to be assured that you are well, and not a care will ever cloud his benevolent countenance. And I said this quote is from Elizabeth's letter to Victor at the beginning of chapter 6, begging him to come home to see them. So over here is going to be your prediction question, and all you're going to do in the first section is say yes or no. So the question is, do you think that Victor will find a happy, cheerful home when he makes it to Geneva? Now, right up here in my little world that I drew, I told you that Victor's story is dark, right? It's a gothic piece. Everything's pretty much been sad and gloomy from this point on. So do we think that Victor will find a happy and cheerful home when he makes it to Geneva? No. When Victor gets home, remember his brother has been murdered. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to highlight the correct answer or your prediction. So assuming we didn't know this, we're going to highlight our prediction. So I'm just choosing yellow up here in the highlight. And I'm going to say no. So now I've answered this first section. And now there's one last thing I have to do, which is back up your answer with what you know about the text. Now pay close attention to this. This says what you know about the text. It does not say text evidence. It would be very hard and a very long process for us to go back and try to find quotes from the text that show that Victor's life is usually sad because to prove that, we'd have to find quotes from chapter one all the way through chapter six. And that's too much, right? So on this, we're just making simple predictions from what we know about the text, meaning what's our understanding of the world, okay? So right here, I might write something like mm, this book is gothic. This means it's going to be gloomy and dark. Only sad things have happened so far. So I think it will continue to be sad. So I read my quote where Elizabeth saying, you'll find a happy, cheerful home. And then I answered my question, do you think that Victor will find a happy, cheerful home? I said, no. And to back up my answer, I told you some things I knew about the text. I know the book is Gothic. I know that means it's going to be gloomy and dark and only sad things have happened so far. So I think it will continue to be sad, okay? This is a very base level prediction, but it allows us to think about that consistent world of the text. So that's quote one. Oh, I think I can do this. There we go. And let's move on and look at quote three. Again, quote two, you should know the answer to that one. I went back in the text so you can figure out what happens um, and you should know that one. Quote three, okay? So this is the first one where it's going to talk at the end of chapter 10, so we haven't read what happens next, so we're making a true, real prediction. So quote three, we're going to start by reading the quote. 
says, if you will comply with my conditions, I will leave them and you at peace. But if you refuse, I will glut the maw of death until it be satiated with the blood of your remaining friends. And I wrote, this quote is from chapter 10. The monster has just met up with Victor and delivers this threat. He says, if you do what I ask, I'll leave you alone. If you don't, I'll kill your remaining friends and family. Okay, so this is one of the very first things we hear from the monster is this threat. If you do what I ask, I'll leave your family alone. But if you refuse, I'll kill them all is essentially the quote. So once we know our quote, we're going to move over to our prediction question and answer it. So the question is, do you think that Victor will meet the monster's demands and prevent his family from being killed? Now, you have two options here, right? But let's think about what's most consistent with Victor. It says, do you think that Victor will meet the monster's demands? This requires Victor to be strong. to listen to the monster and probably, <coughs> excuse me, probably to care. Right around that quote, the monster's talking about, he just wants Victor to listen to him. You're my creator, please listen to me. So this would require Victor to be strong, to be a good listener, and to care, right? Now, some of the things that we know about Victor so far is that he did not speak up when Justine was about to be killed, okay? He was confident his monster did it, but he did not say anything. We also know about Victor that after he created his monster, he ran from it, got sick, was in bed for years, okay? That doesn't really speak to his strength, right? We also know that at home right now, the family is mourning the deaths of William and Justine, and he just kind of ran away by himself, right? So we don't get the sense that Victor's kind of like this strong, brave, selfless person. He's more of kind of like a self-obsessed, dark soul, and we also mentioned over here when we were mapping out his world that Victor is kind of, tend, he tends to misbehave, meaning he just doesn't follow directions. Okay, so right now, do we think that Victor will meet the monster's demands and prevent his family from being killed? Right now, I'm leaning toward no. And I'm leaning this way because Victor has a tendency to kind of do what's worse for himself and his family. So back up my answer with what we know about the text, okay? We know that Victor has been weak before and failed to stand up when others needed him. We also know he tends to run from his problems and he can be selfish. This makes it seem like he won't be able to complete the monster's demands. Okay, so I said we know that Victor has been weak before, so he's not strong, and failed to stand up when others needed him. That goes he may not be that caring. We also know he tends to run from his problems, and he can be selfish. This makes it seem like he won't be able to complete the monster's demands. So what I want you to see in the examples that we've done is that there's no direct quotes. I didn't spend my time going back through the text, finding a bunch of quotes, piecing them together. All I did was made sure that I understood the characters and the world of the text, right? And in Frankenstein, we're talking about darkness. Ooh, this is some ugly writing up here. We're talking about darkness, right? We're talking about what happens when you become so obsessed with something that it starts to affect 
your family, and those around you. So whenever we answer one of these questions, we've got to stick within the world of the text that we know, okay? Mary Shelley will surprise you. There will be twists, but at the end of the day, she will stick to that gloomy, dark world that she's created. So what I would like you to do today is to do quote two, which is one that you already know what will happen, and then do the true predictions in quote four and quote five. I'll also post a discussion padlet so you can tell us what you think will happen next. Tomorrow, we'll continue reading with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. All right, happy Monday. Let me know if you have any questions or need any assistance. Bye-bye.